And here we have a laser harp. We've been contracted to implement an electric structure into a sculpture in Dublin, Ireland. There's an artist who has already built a wooden sculpture in Ireland, and he thought it'd be great if it had you know, lasers for strings and could play actual music. So within this sculpture, this replica, we have micro-adjusting LEDs, which have been converted to house lasers. We have 16 of them, and they're pointing down at photoreceptors. So these photoreceptors are then sending a raw signal through our wiring harness down to these Arduino microcontrollers. The Arduinos then convert the raw signal into audio files, which are then played through our speaker here. If we don't want to be playing through the speaker, these Arduinos can send a signal to a laptop where we then can play any musical instrument we want. My primary role in this project was the programming and software execution of the, our components here. So as Taylor was saying, we have laser diodes going into these photoreceptors. And on a software level, what's happening is these are giving an analog value to our Arduinos. The Arduino converts this analog value to a digital high or low, which is what makes the mo module that we have right here, which is a wave trigger, this red box, and that makes and that plays a sound file on the SD card right here and outputs to the speaker. For the MIDI portion, the MIDI is, MIDI is a serial protocol. So based on what note is being triggered by the lasers, uh, it is converted in software using a special library called MIDI USB and being played on any standard audio software, such as the one we have here, which is Reaper. And view the, through this, you can change it to be any instrument sound you want. This was a project that was actually suggested to us by the artist of this harp here, which is over in Europe in a city right outside of Dublin. And this was a project that was passed on to us from previous years. So we actually went and created a harp very similar to the harp that we found in Dublin. All the dimensions are the same so that we could get those angles proper and uh, fit it correctly. That took a lot, a lot of time. Those angles are not as easy as you think. Obviously, the harp that we see here is has those really complex, intricate curves that we weren't able to implement into the final product that we have, and that added a lot of restraints and complications to our final product just to make sure that even though our dimensions are not the same, we have the angles that we're going to be needing uh, the same as well. Uh, obviously, we ended with 80-20 on our harp, which was very fortunate. Initially, what we planned on doing was drilling right into the harp, and we were worried about damaging the structural integrity of the harp itself and just the beauty of it as it stands. So we decided to just, instead of drilling 16 different holes for uh, the lasers on top and the receivers on the side, we decided to just drill, drill a simple line instead, just keep making sure that the beauty of the project remained. I know myself and many other of my team members really, really like music. I'm in the Glee Club, Jacob over here is in band. Um, so our fascination with music, technology, art, gave us a passion that we weren't able to find in other projects that were suggested. A big part of this project was working hands-on with uh, the physical harp itself. I myself am a really big woodworker. That's been a passion of mine and a hobby of mine since uh, freshman year in high school when I took a woodworking class. Being able to continue that into my college career as a passion, as a hobby, and now as a final capstone project has been a really, really awesome opportunity. And I hope to continue that forward, whether it be woodworking, wiring, coding, all of that um, into my career moving forward. It's really important that we have uh, sponsored projects because it's, uh, it gives it a practicality to it. We're not doing this just because our professor told us to. This is actually going to be implemented into the real world. And we're going to be able to possibly in a couple years go over to Europe and look at this project and say, hey, I did that. We did that. Being able to do that instead of just, oh, here's a homework assignment, turn in, is really special and I don't think we would find anywhere else.
myself and a partner over in Ireland who's an artist called Joey Burns who has developed a beautiful old harp that was in commission in Dublin Council for approximately 10 years. It got decommissioned. It was based on uh, an old poem called The Yellow Bittern. Uh, The shapes and heads on the carvings are very synonymous with particular parts of this uh, very old and very important old Irish poem. The size of the harp sculpture itself on the inside is almost exactly the same as the inside of this electronic harp that we've produced. Um, the idea was was that we were going to get the students to look at the artistic aspects and the challenges associated with trying to develop something that was going to mix old and new technologies such as carving and electronics to create something that was magical. Um, as most of you know, the harp is a very ancient symbol in Ireland and has been associated with huge amounts of legends. Uh, having a harp that gets played by magical movements is something that's going to be of great interest to artists throughout the country. Our partner in this project is Cavan County Council in uh, Ireland. They have been in the process of building civic offices in Virginia County Cavan. That's right beside uh, another beautiful church that's been converted into a a theatre. In these civic offices, this uh, harp is going to be installed as a featured piece that students and visitors to the area are going to interact with from a kind of artistic and electronic point of view. This will be a popular destination for children that will be doing school tours that uh, may have stories that will evolve because of this project. Uh, We're expecting this to have a large impact in the Cavan area to promote art, history and technology and education. So very much the STEAM theory of education is going to be employed, has been employed to this project and uh, we're trying to see if this will generate both on the Irish and the American side, further projects that will enthuse students on both sides of the ocean to create something that's not only very functional electronically and built from scratch, but also has a large artistic and emotional value to the people that are going to interact with it. So this is a pilot project for uh, trying to see how this is going to work. We are hoping that the unveiling of this is going to be in September 2022 and the rest is yet to come.